Hi, um, we're here at the bunker today and uh, we're having a discussion about personal finances. The topic we are covering for now is mortgages. Um, I'm Andra, I'm a content writer here at Bunk uh, and I'll be asking some questions about mortgages because I don't know much and here to help me answer them is... Manolis, um, yeah, I've been at Bunk for a year and a half and looking after a few things amongst which um, are the mortgages. So um, yeah, I hope I can answer some of the questions you have. All right, well, let's dive into it. All right, let's start with the basics. Uh, what is a mortgage? Well, I mean, mortgage is, is kind of a, a, in the most basic um, idea is a loan um, that you will receive from the lender, mostly a bank like bank. Um, and yeah, you, you just get that loan in order to buy a house or uh, an apartment, any type of, of, of real estate investment. And yeah, you, you um, yeah. That, that's that's the most basic idea. Obviously, part of that contract that you will enter with is that you have to pay it back. Um, and so there's there will be all the details, um, how much interest you will have to pay, et cetera, et cetera, and um, how quickly you have to pay that loan back, all those details. That's, that's kind of that contract together, um, that loan will constitute a mortgage. All right. I got a lot of questions about interest, but that's later. Yeah. Um, I guess, first of all, if you decide you need a mortgage or you want a mortgage, um, how do you know how much you can actually afford uh, before you start looking at houses that cost three millions? And yeah, three millions is probably <laughs> going to be difficult. Um, I mean, at maybe you're more fortunate than, than we are. but um, No, so um, it's it's kind of, there's a bunch of different things you, you, you need to look at, but... Um, and and there's primarily for the protection of the the borrow that you you don't go into something that you will not be able to afford. There's there's a there's a rule of thumb that says um, roughly five times your annual before tax or gross income. Um, that is kind of the value of the home that you would be able to afford. Um, yeah, the 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 best case probably. I mean, that's obviously where you can go and look online, Fauda, whatever you wherever you look in your. Um, um, uh, for your mortgage or your your houses, but but um, those types of things, obviously, all, always your your mortgage advisor, um, maybe something we can cover later as well. Uh, will will be able to help you with. But five times your gross income is roughly where you where you should probably start to cap looking. Okay, and is it wise to basically go for the most you can go? Uh, no, um, I mean obviously. Um, yeah, everyone likes a nice house, but um, if you can find something cheaper, you're going to have more money left over um, outside of you know interest payments and repaying your loan. And, and um, especially another thing that you have to consider is the more expensive your, your home and the larger your, your mortgage loan, the more all the upfront costs will be. Um, and yeah, maybe we can get into that immediately. Um, yeah, what what are these upfront? Costs? Exactly. So there's there's taxes. Um, there's a, and 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 I won't go into all the details, but um, so for example, um, unless you're I think 34 and under or 35, um, there's there's something called a transfer tax. So um, yeah, if you if you're buying a house, that's two percent. Um, so yeah, that can immediately already be. A good amount of money there. Um, then, if you used a mortgage, um, you, you will use a mortgage advisor. Um, that that's kind of the law. Um, so that's another, I don't know, say three thousand. That's independent of the the value. But then, um, if you used a uh, a broker that that made you aware of the house. So if you, if you're looking for a house and you can't find it online or wherever, um, the, and you use a person, a broker. Um, then, then that person will also charge another two percent or so. So that it it can rack up pretty quickly. Um, and obviously, the the more the, the the more the house costs or the apartment, the more uh, you'll have to have out of pocket in front. Um, and I guess that's another thing to consider as well. Yeah. So there is an ex like a fairly exact amount that you should think of, like oh, I should have ten k or twenty k or thirty k. Um, yeah. To prepare for this. It's a bit flexible depending on what you're getting to. Exactly. It's a bit flexible, but I think you should somewhere, re I mean, realistically um, be in the range of 10 to maybe 25,000. And that, again, depends on, on whether you use an external 
um, broker um, or you find it online, whether you are 35 or younger, whether how expensive your house is. So those are all things that there's, yeah, it all, it all, <laughs> it, it depends. We, we might hear that a lot today, <laughs> but it, it depends um, on, on, on certain factors. Um, but yeah, so I think that, that there's a range um, that, yeah. It, and that just to be clear, if you if you don't um, if you have some money available, you can obviously yeah pull that aside um, to to pay for for your for these upfront costs. But um, yeah, it's 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 definitely something to be aware of that you can yeah. you can borrow if you have zero money in your bank account and you you're planning on borrowing a hundred percent of the the value of the house, you're not going to be able to get it because you still need I don't know fifteen. Let's say a thousand to, to to get the house. Yeah. Okay, that's not gonna work then. No. Um, all right. Is there is there like a limit on how many mortgages you can get? Um, does it? Well, yeah, a mortgage by definition is kind of um, the the place you live. Like it it is for the place that you live in, and so you can only live in one place um, um, officially. And so any other mortgage that you are going to want to take out is what's called a buy to let or buy to rent. I don't know why they call it let, but anyways, it's it's for renting purposes. And there the taxes are more, um, yeah, just a bunch of other things um, just become much more expensive. Um, and the interest rate uh, primarily also is much higher because obviously if you live in, in a place, the person who's giving you the money is pretty sure that you're going to take care of the house. While if you're giving someone money to buy a house to rent it out, there's a higher risk that potentially that house is not going to be taken care of that well, and and all these other kind of risks that the person might not find someone to rent. So all of a sudden, that person who who bought the house to rent it out doesn't have any income from renting it out, and so anyways, there there could be uh, there's a bunch of reasons a lot why of risk. there yeah there's more risk and more risk means higher interest more um, money. Yeah, more money exactly, and um, yeah, so that's why any any second mortgage you will want to take out is going to be more expensive. Is this in the Netherlands or pretty much across Europe, as, um, as far as you know? As far as I know, it, it, this is this is a pretty universal thing. Um, it's it's a it's really a s different market. Um, so mortgages and and when you, we speak about mortgages, um, I I will I will normally speak about the the homeowner mortgages, not the um, buy to rent mortgages, um, yeah, um, they, they will normally be quite a difference um, in, in, in all kinds of kind of what you need to provide to, you know, the, the, the bank that's going to give you the money in terms of what you need to have up front. Um, yeah, all, all these types of things will be qu quite significantly different um, and, and, yeah, normally more difficult to to get. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um Okay, so we were uh, briefly mentioning interest rates before, which yes. I think is where we all get pretty lost. Um, I guess most people know what an interest rate is, but there's definitely different interest rates when it comes to mortgage. I think fixed and floating. variable, floating, okay. Var var variable, floating, right. both, um, both the same thing, yeah. What's the difference? Is one better than the other? What's what's the deal? Well, okay, um, yeah, we can go into a, a, a deep financial math topic here, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so first of all, interest, obviously, um, let's go with the easiest and most common thing in the Netherlands. Um, and, and I think also in, in Germany, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, um, is a fixed rate mortgage. And so that means that... Um, for a certain amount of years, let's, let's take an example, 10 years, you agree with the bank who's giving you the money, hey, um, my, our interest rate that I will be paying you for this loan is going to be, let's, let's just say 3%. Um, and so for the next 10 years, on which each end of the month, you look at what balances do I still owe the bank, you take that amount, you multiply by 3%, and then divide it by 12 because it's, it's an annual interest rate, mm -hmm. and so you you only have one out of twelve months. So, anyways, that's that's just that is as much math as we're gonna hopefully do today. Um, but um, so that's kind of high level what what the what the interest rate and then how it translates to the actual interest payment uh, at that at, uh, for one month will be. Um, and so that's let's say that three percent, 
And in 10 years time, you go back to your bank and you say, hey, um, our 10 years is up. What's the new rate? And if you don't like it and someone else maybe is better, then at that point it is, a, is always a good way, is it always a good time to, to, to maybe look around. In general, it's, it, you, there's always the possibility of, of um, changing around. There might be clauses in your mortgage that you might have to pay a little bit of a fee to, to break your, um, your mortgage. But um, yeah, especially when, when interest rates have moved significantly, it's always good to, to see if you can maybe lessen the burden of, of interest rates on you. Um, and that kind of brings us into the variable rate. So if you want to avoid all of those headaches of having to look into um, have the interest rates reduced and can I maybe save some money by by what's called refinancing my mortgage. So getting rid of your old loan and getting a new loan at a, at a better, at a lower rate, you can have a variable rate. So um, that will monthly or quarterly increase or decrease based on what kind of the financial market rates um, have done. And so that's obviously great if rates go down. It's not so great if rates go up. And so uh, that's, yeah. So it's, it's, it's definitely a bit more risky, but it could play better for you. But exactly. you'll never know. Exactly. So so that's the thing is is if you, if you and, and maybe also if you have a view, right now a lot of people are saying, oh, interest rates are so high, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, have a mortgage. Well, you could always, and it doesn't have to be everything. One thing I was actually not aware of until um, I, I became more involved in, in mortgages um, at bank is is you can actually have a, a mortgage is not one single deal. It can be half of your loan can be a variable rate loan. Half of your loan can be a fixed rate loan. These are all things that you're, if you have a good mortgage advisor, which um I can't help you with, but <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, hopefully soon, if if I if I come around to to actually uh, looking into more closely, but into buying a house, um, I will. But uh, they should be able to really kind of understand where you are, understand what what you want to have, and and maybe ask these types of questions. Is you can have half fixed, half variable, so that if it goes up, it's it's a bit painful, but it's not going to it's not going to make you kind of not be able to pay your interest anymore. But if it goes down, you have a bit of a, a bit of a savings. So, so that's something you can kind of do. Okay, that's definitely news. So that's nice. Um, yeah, kind of like what you were saying that people nowadays are a bit scared. I know I am. I know my friends around my age is kind of we're around that age where like you probably should buy a house, but it's a weird time, and everywhere you see is like okay, rates are up. Uh, is it true that a lot of banks nowadays don't really give fixed rates anymore? No, no um, I, I mean, in the Netherlands is still the vast majority of, of mortgages. Um, and again, sorry, I, I'm, I'm focused on the Netherlands here. Um, but um, it's the vast majority is fixed rate. It has, uh, what we have seen is that instead of fixing, uh, and I think um, the Dutch people are, are really happy with um, planning certainty. So they used to be a, a, a very skewed towards 30 year fixing your the 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 interest rate for thirty years, which is normally the the amount of time that you you expected to pay off your mortgage by, and they would fix it for the whole time, and they would they were very happy with it. But what we've actually seen is is kind of shifting it to ten years, which kind of tells you that people are aware. Okay, I don't this right now is not a good time to lock in your rates for thirty years. Maybe if I lock it in for a shorter time in ten years time, I'll have better luck and I'll have better rates. So that's that's where we have seen a clear kind of, you know, that consciousness of hey rates are high, actually impact the mortgage market and where people are being most active. Yeah. All right, interesting. Um, is that would you say that it's is it still a good time to get a mortgage? Is it still a good time to buy a house? Is it ever not? <laughs> yeah, no, and yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's some times where maybe it's ever not, but. Um, I don't know. I, again, I'm I myself kind of playing with the idea. I think one thing that's important to be aware is, and and I've and I've stressed this in the first few minutes, uh, the costs that you have. Um, so you don't want to spend fifteen thousand and um, or more, and then move a, a, a year later. Um, so these costs, obviously, if there's if they if they're kind of distributed above, I, I mean, you you'll pay them on day one, but mm -hmm. obviously. 
you'll benefit from those costs for as long as you live in that place. And so if you if you if you if you split it up amongst ten years that you're going to live in that house or apartment, then that's acceptable. If you live there for one year, it's probably a little painful and probably not something you want to do. So that's my number one tip is when people ask me, "Hey, is it a good time to buy or not?" Is it, "Hey, are you expecting to stay in this place for I don't know, let's say at least three, but probably more like five or more years?" Uh, that's my number one um, recommendation or, or thing to highlight. Um, then number two is is I don't think it's very wise to really what we call in finance timing the market. Um, you never know. Interest rates could keep going up. Uh, no one knows. Um, and and yeah, if you find a place that you like that you can afford, um, you will immediately stop say uh, start saving rent as soon as you move out of your rental apartment. So that's that's obviously a, a plus. And something that actually is maybe a little bit of a of a confusing idea, sorry, um, is a bit of a confusing idea is um, we're right now, and I don't know if if people have heard of this, but inflation is really high, right? Oh, I think they've heard. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And so, <laughs> um, and and the thing that you forget is that if you have a loan, that loan also has kind of uh, loses value so what you're saying is oh i have money on my account it's losing value yeah but also your loan is losing value so if you have let's say four hundred thousand um euro mortgage if inflation and that's not hope it goes back to ten percent if it if it were to go back to ten percent in one year you would have made forty thousand just because Technically speaking, and this is obviously a bit theoretical, you would have to assume that your salary has gone up by the same amount. But in theory, if if you really take ten percent inflation by its 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 core number, that means all of a sudden your loan of forty thousand is in new money, uh, four hundred thousand is all of a sudden in new money only forty thousand less, so three hundred sixty thousand. And so those is that something kind of people forget in this whole discussion about interest rates being high. Well, as long as inflation is high. It's actually really good to have debt because that debt loses in relative spending power in in burgers or beers that you can have as an equivalent of that. Um, you can have, yeah, a lot. It, it's the less beer equivalent, let's say. I think um, you're right. I think no one really thinks about that. I think everyone's just pretty scared of. And yeah, the the idea that it's a lot, but I don't think anyone thinks that when the supermarket prices go down, then uh, so will this huge debt that you have. Um, yeah. So I, I, that's positive news. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, and, and again, I think the most important thing is is if, if everything else works out and you can afford it, which is a big, big, big question, and, and the higher interest rates, the harder it is to afford something, right? So, so the, and, then, and then again, this is, this is something where the mortgage broker will, will, will do the calculation for you or you go on the website and there's a bunch of websites um, where you can type in your salary and it will tell you roughly how much you can afford. But um, yeah, the higher the interest rates are, the, the less you'll be able to borrow because yeah, the, the, your monthly bill will be higher and they will want to make sure that, that that monthly bill doesn't stress you too much. It, it's, it's in no one's interest to to kind of stress the borrower to yeah, a point where they can't pay. We, we've seen how that went a couple of years ago. So yeah. Um, okay, so it sounds that like basically, if you know you're going to be in one place for at least three years, um, and you know you can afford those down payments, which yeah. are a significant amount, then it is still pretty much or always is quite a good idea to. Go for a mortgage and go for your own place yeah. versus rent. I mean, yeah, just just be sure that you you if you're a little bit handy because you can no longer call your landlord and say, "Hey, my pipe's broken or my toilet's clogged." And that is a all, big one. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right. That's a big problem. Um, so tell me a bit. You were saying that here by law you need a mortgage advisor. Yeah, I mean, there's a few banks as well, bigger banks that 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 have that license as well, and and. But it is again. It is for protection of the consumer that, um, yeah, you you need a, an independent advisor. Or again, some banks have kind of in-house independent advisors that will do the same work, um, even though their label is um, the same as the people who give you the mortgage. Um, 
But yeah, that's why people come to me and say, hey, I want, I need a mortgage. Can you give me a mortgage? I'm saying, no, I, I can't give you a mortgage. <laughs> even even if I wanted to, I couldn't legally because, um, yeah, there, it's 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 fiduciary. So you, you really need someone who has your best interest at heart, who looks at your financial situation, who who understands what you want and what you need, and they will advise you and give you the best offer available. So they will look at all the all the options on the table and give you the maybe a few one two um, options um, that, that that look good for you, and you can then maybe choose your amongst those best options. You can then choose the one you want. This person sounds very important in this process. Yeah. Um, how do you know or where do you find the best? Obviously, I think there's a lot of options. I mean, besides, I guess, if you have close friends or someone who went through it and can recommend. Um, yeah, wh- where do we find these people? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess the internet is always a good place to look. Um, and as far as I understand, the first kind of uh, in conversation with these people is always going to be free. Um, so you can okay. always go have a first chat, see what they if they listen to you, if they take your concerns and your your ideas seriously or not always uh, if they don't then don't work with them because that's not how that should work um but yeah uh, you can always have a free kind of trial and see how they work with you and 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 whether it's it it, it seems to be a good partnership and if not then go to the next one i mean so you gotta go a bit with your gut feeling yeah i think so and again they have an, a fiduciary obligation to do the best that they can um, obviously, sometimes people are just not good. <laughs> um, so you, even if they try, they they might not be the best. But in general, that it's it's a pretty uh, pretty kind of standardized, um, yeah, market, and 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 they should still give you a very good offer um, or the best offer available to you. So, um, but yeah, I think you should just go with the gut feeling. Yeah. All right. Um, did you ever think? Well, I'm guessing it's a pretty complicated process, but. Um, can you get like mortgages abroad? Like, you know, probably once you're settled where you are and you're like, oh, a holiday well, house in Spain would be nice. I'm not too sure about it. But again, back to the point of, um, at least in the Netherlands, you have to be a resident here. Um, or pay that extra. Or pay that extra. And, and, and then it becomes much more expensive as if, if it's if it's not your primary residence. Um, that, that, will, that will be more expensive. So I... Yeah, as much as we all want to have that um, house in Spain or somewhere for for the gray gray Amsterdam winters, um, I, I would could imagine that it's it is going to be more expensive, um, similar to to what I mentioned before on your second home in in Amsterdam, mm-hmm. which would then technically be for rent. That, you know? yeah. So I hope you all liked the little conversation we had here. Um, I certainly did. And yeah, if you if you like this kind of topic, um, be sure to subscribe, and we'll have topics around personal finance every week and yeah if you have any questions i know this is maybe a dense topic and maybe we didn't cover all of the questions you had just comment down below and and we'll we'll try and get to back to you as much as we can and as as best as we can and um yeah see you next week Uh